What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, well, you've come to the right place. This video is gonna be really hard for me to make. I've made videos shunning and shaming drama queens and kings alike. I've name called, cat called, and everything in between, but this is different, because now I'm talking about old folk. Now, don't get me wrong, I try to care for the geezers, because ever since a very young age, I've been taught to respect my elders. But I'll be honest, a lot of them are just plain weird. Like, you ever noticed there's two types of old people? You've got the good ones, wise beyond their years, and they pass on their hard-earned wisdom onto you. So maybe, just maybe, in the right situation, it can make your life just a little bit easier. But then, you've got the... Pardon my French here, the batshit crazy ones who shouldn't have been allowed five feet out of the old folks home. Listen here, I was at the bus terminal trying to get my tired butt home after another grueling 14 hour shift when some geezer sits right next to me. He decides to strike up a conversation, lucky me right? And after an awkward series of introductions, he begins talking about how he used to be an arms dealer to a bunch of Latin American terrorist groups across the continent when he was in the army. And I'm just sitting there like, why are you telling me all this? Now, nah, don't get me wrong. I've got no issue with anyone selling a few M16s and RPGs to some El Presidente in some country that I've never even heard of. Frankly, I admire the entrepreneurial spirit. That's the sort of stuff this country was founded on. And if you don't like it, you can take it up with George Washington when I kick your commie ass all the way up to the pearly gates. Where was I going with this again? Like I said, I don't have much of an issue with this kind of stuff. The problem is, conversations like these are bound to bring in some men in black to my doorstep, and they're gonna have a bunch of questions that I just ain't gonna be able to answer. Point in case, I tend to stay away from geezers, because frankly, I got enough problems as it is, thank you very much. So, we have this guy named Jerry Saltz. Supposedly a renowned art critic, although I've never heard of him, although that's probably because I'm not into art. I mean, let's face it folks, modern art is just putting a random object onto a pillar and then selling said object for the price of a small third world country. Whatever, this man cannot brew a cup of joe to save his goddamn life. We've got this tweet right here, I assume it was made when people still cared about COVID. Commencing day 16 of sheltering in place. Coffee run to gas station complete. 18 large to go, put in car, drive them home, delouse, decontaminated, showered, and placed in fridge for use. Jesus, the way he describes it, you'd think he's keeping a journal in a goddamn zombie apocalypse, only going out when he absolutely needs to, keeping his back against the corners to keep from being detected from the infected, all to sneak into some pansy liberal coffee shop to stock up. Not only that, but he like, decontaminates them? Showers it? Like, you're showering coffee? Aren't you just, like, watering it down or something? No wonder this country's in a goddamn mess. Rich folks are spending their money on decontaminating coffee instead of paying their fair share of taxes. Stay safe out there, outlaws and creative gypsies. I beg your pardon? And you've got a picture of all of his coffee cups? in the back seat. Now, frankly, if I was gonna do something as stupid as this, I'd at least like secure them or something. You're like a speed bump away from giving your car's interior a new paint job. Yes, it is so damaged and offensive to not drink Chi Chi artisanal coffee and like New York City d coffee and have to store it in fridge. Horrific for you, I understand. Never change. Maybe block me? I'm not up to your high standards. Lol. Damaged. What a snowflake. I don't know what the context of this is. I tried to find the original tweet and couldn't find it. He's arguing with someone over some bullcrap. I'll say this though, he's right about them higher end coffee shops. They just ain't worth your money. Like, you know those coffee shops that those hipsters go to that charge like $7 for a cup of joe because it's like, I don't know, organic? Made cruelty free? Whatever the hell that's supposed to mean? I don't get them. For God's sakes, it's coffee. It's gonna taste like crap whether it's natural grown, pesticide free, or infused with the DNA of Joseph Stalin himself. Real question, no joke, I'm going to teach myself to make coffee. Explain this as if I were not. Why would a nine-year-old be making coffee? How many spoonfuls of the coffee would I put it in if I wanted to make eight cups? Keep it simple. Really simple. Do not recommend any other coffees or methods. I am 71. It is time. Oh lord, guys. He's gonna do it. He's really gonna make his own pot of coffee. For God's sake, can you just use Google? 
Although I guess I can't blame him for being a little confused. I mean, just look at the damn thing. It's got all those buttons and LCD screen like, when did we as a species decide that coffee machines weren't advanced enough? We got people paying $200 for a coffee machine because it's got Amazon Echo built into it. It's crazy. Just brew me a damn pot of coffee for God's sake. Dear everyone who was trying to tell me how to make coffee. Well, no one told me where to pour the water into my coffee machine. Oh my. Because it's self-explanatory. I poured eight cups of water directly over the grounds. It overflowed all over my kitchen floor. And there are grounds everywhere back to local gas station. Good loud. You know, Mr. Salt, I think you should just do what I do. Boil yourself a pot of water, throw some grounds in there, heat it up, and pour it into a mug. I know, I know, that ain't civilized enough for you, Mr. High and Mighty Art Critic, but for God's sake, I'm trying to offer solutions here. Like you can't keep buying gas station coffee, that just ain't sustainable. How is that sustainable? That's like five dollars a cup. You're out here buying in bulk, come on man, why? I mean, if there's anything I have to say, at least he's hoarding coffee and not toilet paper. I mean, seriously, what was that? People lining up to buy toilet paper to prepare for a disease? Why not hoard food or something? Something important. Toilet paper? I don't get it. Look, man, I just read through these and I just feel pain. Absolute pain. I feel bad for this man, doggone it. I made this channel to laugh at stupid people and now I'm feeling sympathetic. If this guy was like 25 years old, I'd be laughing till the cows come home. But since it's an elderly man, laughing just feels so wrong. Look, man, Jerry, Mr. Saltz, I'm begging you. Please, go to an old folks home. If you can't make coffee, I don't want to know what the other aspects of your life is like. I can't bear the thought of you living like this, man. Please, just get to a place where people can help you live. This ain't right, man. This ain't right, so This just ain't right. I gotta say, though, I do love coffee. Like, when you work as long as hard as I do, you've gotta make some tough choices regarding schedule. Like, do I make a YouTube video, or do I get a full eight hours of sleep? Obviously, I've had to make some sacrifices. Of course, I can always count on my morning cup of joe to get me through the day. I don't know what I'd do if I had to go to work on four hours of sleep without coffee just because I wanted to make a goddamn YouTube video. Hallelujah, brother. Anyways, I'm just gonna put in an unrelated tweet here because, well, I just like complaining about things on the internet. I just see a random tweet and I'm just like, well, there's my video for the day. Someone who I followed retweeted this post and it's just got me shaking my head. This guy, Jeff Porker, never heard of him. Chances are and you haven't either. He made this post. Going viral ain't what it's cracked up to be. Here's why. I had a YouTuber on the podcast, who no one watches, whose video went viral. Wasn't trying to, by the way. Alright, sounds normal enough. No one really tries to make a video viral. Just kinda happens. Any video not on this topic tanked hard. Okay, well, what I wanna know is, did their channel tank, or did they return to getting the amount of views before he went viral? I feel like that's an important distinction to make. Just because a video goes viral or does better than expected doesn't mean that you're on the gravy train to YouTube stardom. More often than not, it's just a quick burst of subs and views before your channel goes back to its normal, albeit slightly higher view rates. Hell, just use me as an example. Now, granted, I've never gone viral, but I've had a few videos that did well for a channel like mine. I made a video on Daft Pina. It got me a lot of views and subscribers. The catch is, most of the people who subscribed to me were from the art community. I don't make art content, so a lot of those people didn't end up returning to watch what I put on my channel. So what ended up happening is eventually the hops surround in the video died down, and my view and sub counts pretty much went back to what they were before I had dropped the video. My channel didn't die, my views didn't tank, I just had a video that did well, and eventually it died down. And you know, I'd go as far to say that that video really did help me out in the long run, because I've noticed that it's been getting a lot easier to bring new people into the channel ever since that, that video dropped. And I've noticed a lot of returning commenters, so yeah, there's that. But you know, that's why I make it a point not to milk my better performing content, because it might be good for short term growth, but it won't do much good to sustain interest in the channel long term. He had to make a whole other channel for the other topics he wanted to talk about. Well, no, he didn't have to. He could have just stuck with the old channel. And he probably would have done just fine. Frankly, by choosing to start a new channel, all they're really doing is shooting themselves in the foot. 
They had a somewhat established channel and they could have capitalized on their potential. But no, they couldn't handle the low views. Boo hoo, so sad. Sound like fun. Yeah, whatever dude. Like seriously, genuine piece of advice to anyone eyeing the YouTube game. I got some advice for you. YouTube is a game with ebbs and flows. You might make a video that gets a lot of views. Hell, you might make a bunch of videos that do so. Only for your next 10, 20 videos to perform like absolute trash. That's normal. Normal, everyone experiences it. Just don't let it get to you. Literally, all you have to do is keep making content and improving your craft, and you're bound to net at least a few hundred subscribers. I mean, hell, just look at me. First year in, I've got me 300 subscribers, and I'm probably the dumbest son of a gun to walk the earth. If I can do it, you can too, baby. But that's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, you guys do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.